everybody and greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Prophet Alan Brooks, Sr. Now, we're still dealing, dealing with the subject message, God's true marriage relationship. A true marriage relationship. And this is something that God had already ordained from the beginning, even, even the redemption of his bride, even the redemption of his wife, Adam, because Christ becomes the second Adam. Now, we're going to look at the seriousness of how God sees this mystery of godliness, which is a relationship of a husband man and a bride that he had to go find and clean up, get her purified and sanctified and holy and blameless. Then he's going to present her to himself, to himself. He's going to present her to himself in holy matrimony at the rapture, at the rapture of the church, at the rapture of his bride taking her to the reception, which she will be a part of. Then to reign with Christ a thousand years in the millennium. Then after a short time, after that great judgment of Satan, the false prophets, the antichrist, the devil and the imps are all cast into the lake of fire. Now for eternity. Now, when we started here in Ephesians chapter number five, Christ in, in preaching the, of the gospel, he deals with us in every situation that we can have in the earth, starting with a marriage, starting with a marriage relationship, building a family under God, through God, by God. And we have lost the true leadership role of the men and the true leadership role of the eyes of those who are to lead the world to Christ. It starts with the head. For the head of the woman is the man. It starts with the man. For the head of the man is Christ. Those two there are, are the main two that's out of place today and causing the main trouble in the world because the woman is out of place. Not so much in your ability to have the Holy Ghost and to be able to exegete and to manifest the power of God to become teachers, preachers, evangelists, prophets, and apostles, and the other nine gifts can be manifested through male or female. But that is not to say that God has exempt the Hamitic race of people from being the chosen group because what he did to the Shamanic race of people, he blinded their eyes so that they could not receive the Christ, their Savior and Redeemer when he came so he could engraft another group of people, which could become a part of that first bride the children of Israel and their blessings that God promised to them through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob is Israel. Now watch this, that we're dealing with the relationship, the marriage relationship. You, you have to first see it in the eyes of God and have your first experience in Christ because they're in there, in that first experience, you, sub, you submit. It's where you learn how to submit as a bride being courted for marriage. That's what y'all been doing. Which I forgot that you are the bride of Christ and he's courting us and he's adorning us with holiness. That's why his bride, which is the body of Christ, which is many members in one body. We're going to go to that. That's why when, when he receives her, we're all caught up together. And when we, when we are received in him totally, all of our works will be judged in him. His eyes are like a flame of fire, which will judge us at the rapture. For what value of works our works had. That's that. But he himself shall be saved, even so by fire. But if there were more portrayals of the understanding in our teachings of Christ and his relationship to the body. Now, do you understand Christ's purpose for you? His main purpose for you as a bride and us collectively in the body is to never be broken again. Yes, is to never be broken again because you have a husband man. You have a husband, a succor. That, that has literally taken care of everything that the bride would need, not only for now, in the past, but also for the future, even into her eternity. Watch this. We're going to watch this. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Submitting. So in the body of Christ, it is a place of submission. Because we are submitting ourselves to 
the Holy Ghost or the power of God or the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ, the spirit by which Christ does things through in the earth. We are submitting ourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, which is the body, submit yourselves unto your own head or husbands. A wife wouldn't submit to another body. A wife wouldn't submit to another head on another body. Excuse me. A wife would only submit to her. She only submits to her own head on her body. She does not submit to another head on another body. To cause her to be the best wife that she could be to her head. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife. Now look at verse 22. It says, submit, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now watch this in Genesis. That This is the scripture that y'all have just said. Forget, we're not even talking about this. Because here I'll say again, the curse that God put on the serpent, Adam, and Eve is still on them today. And the curse that he put on them, Christ Jesus dying on the cross, died for the curse of sin. He died for the curse of sin, which is in the sting of death. That's what he died for, that you don't have to die in your sins, that the sting of death doesn't just pass you right by because Christ died to death for us. But this curse right here, he put on the serpent, Adam and Eve, even though this prophecy was fulfilled in, in Genesis 3.15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. He did that. It's, it's still there. And between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, we understand that to know that the fulfillment of that prophecy is in Romans 16, 20, that Christ did fulfill this prophecy right here. Why well, it says, but unto the woman, he said, and I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's still going on. And in sorrow, this is still going on. Thou shalt bring forth children. That's still going on, y'all. And this curse, this is a part of the curse. And thy desires, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Hmm. He shall rule over thee and you shall be subject to thy own husband. Now, if you're a single woman in the Lord and you have ever been a part of any sexual relationships, you've been intimate before, this is a time where you're going to have to watch your spirituality being, being single, being single until the Lord develops us and gives us the true understanding and the wisdom and the knowledge to walk in a true spiritual marriage, a holy matrimony with those down here who still have sin, who still have to learn in Christ. They have to learn in Christ how to submit to Christ. And then that we'll be happily to submit in a marriage relationship. Now you see here, and he said, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That's, that's still true. Jesus dying on the cross did not redeem us from this curse here. Thorns also and thistles shall bring forth to thee and thou shalt eat the herbs of the field and in the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread Till thou return unto the ground, and out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto thus thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of the living. And unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them, which is God's forbearance. It is his forbearance that's allowing God to forbear them out of the garden to get us to the Christ. The second Adam, the bride of Christ. Now, watch this. It 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34, it says, let your women keep silent in the churches. It says in 33, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent in all in the churches. For it is not permitted for them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What came the words of God out from you or came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Do y'all hear this? But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Let all things be done decently and in order. Hmm. Do y'all hear this? Now, the problem with this is that, you know, the Lord, you know, us as saints, we'll tell people, the Lord got me on silence. I'm not saying nothing right now. I'm not going to speak. Well, you women are going to have to uh, mirror that same submission to Christ in your silence, even in your marriage relationship. Some of you, you talk too much. You're speaking as if you don't know that you two are one. As, you, as if you have to prove you're better than him. No, you're one. You're one. Now, out of the one can manifest a multitude of gifts and talents. It's to bless the one. It's to bless the whole family. All the gifts and talents in us. Look at, look at the family of Noah. They were consistent in their marriage relationship and their children on one to what the will of God was to so much to the point. In all of their mockery, people mocking them and cursing them. Saying that they're liars. Noah, getting the word from the Lord, his wife submitted to that and their children. To the point, to 120 years, they, it took them to build the ark. If Noah is 600 when the ark is finished, his sons are at least 120 years old. Now that's some submission. You can't get these teenagers to submit in the 20s, in their teens. You can forget it in the 30s and the 40s. It's over with. Ain't nobody listening to nobody. And that's why people aren't getting married in what y'all say is the church. Because it's too much confusion and disorder in those buildings. Y'all gonna have to go right back to the text, verse by verse, to see what's in these people's spirit. Not your head and what's coming out your head and your, your wicked heart. Y'all hear this? And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent in the churches. Now, oh my. Now, that could be a big, giant dialogue for the next five years. But there are basic things that you understand and you know, like submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. You know that. You, you, that's nothing to debate about. But you're going back into your flesh. Because if, if you don't have a, in the body of Christ, everybody has a head. In the body of Christ, all the women that are single, you still have Christ as your head that you're still submitted to. Then when you get married, you marry and go right into another head. But it's okay because you've already learned how to submit to Christ in all the years you say you've been saved. In all the years you've been tooting your horn about the wonderful saint that you are, that you have become. Now, the, the, the bride of Christ is not a judge. She's not a judge. The bride of Christ, she loves her head. And she submits to him. 
And the she is us, the many members in the one body. But then when we go into a marriage and a courtship, we're even court, being courted by Christ and even we're submitted in that forever. And y'all haven't even seen the husband man. You haven't even seen Christ and you're submitted forever. I'm in prayer. I'm in worship. I'm in outreach. You're in total submission. But then you, act, you all act like you don't know how to submit when it comes to courting a male or female in your courtship. You don't know how to submit and be loyal and faithful and trustworthy. Because those are all of the things that Christ is looking for you as a single person in the Lord. As you as the, the, the body and he as the head. You as the single and he as the head over you. Because one thing in the body of Christ, nobody walks around without a head. Only if you're walking in ignorance and only if you're walking in confusion. Watch this. In Colossians chapter number three. Oh, Lord. I know this is rough, y'all, y'all. But you got to go back here because other than that, nobody's going to get married. And when people get married, they're going to be divorcing very quickly. In annulments. In severance. And no scripture is going to be fulfilled when the Lord says, what well, God is joined together, let no man put asunder, break it apart, sew it apart, rip it apart, unglue it apart, sever it. Because the Lord is the succor of those that are born again in the body. He says in, in, in Colossians 3, he's speaking these things about a marriage and a relationship from the relationship between Christ and his church, which is a mystery, the mystery of godliness. This is a part of that mystery, y'all. He says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit. Don't nothing else fit, y'all. Nothing else will fit. If you do not submit to your own husband, nothing else will fit with the Lord. It says, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Because you will never be bitter against your own body. For no man ever hateth his own body, but loveth and cherish and nourisheth it. Y'all see this? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. The wife is the body. Husbands, love your bodies and be not bitter against them, against your body. Because no man ever hateth himself. Y'all love yourselves. This, this should be very easy to do, especially if you have the Holy Ghost. Children, obey your parents in all things. These kids off the chain. They don't wait buck wild. And that's because of what they seen before the parents. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children unto anger, lest they be discouraged. Don't, 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 provoke, don't provoke your children to anger. Don't discourage your children. Don't discourage the babies. Because you're a baby in the Lord. You're a child of God. You're the little ones of the Lord. How would you like somebody to discourage you and keep provoking you to anger? Yeah, y'all gonna have to work on that because there's too many children in the foster care system and there's too many children being molested, abused, beaten. That's those parents. And then a lot of the parents were abused, beaten, molested. You know why? Because the wives weren't submitting to their own husband, which was fitting the Lord, and the husbands didn't love their wives and made them bitter against them. We saw it. You saw it. It was a whole like a wave. Whether they was in the church or out of the church, just a multitude. Courts full of people that say they were in some kind of love. Must have been Eros and Phileo and Storgoy. And they ran down to the, the people's court and got a divorce. Everything we just read is said in the Lord. You're doing all this. Why well, said servants obey in all things your masters. That has to be broken down according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. If, if you're single in the Lord, you still got a head. Because it's preparing you for a marriage, whether it's physical or spiritual. What's this? What's this? Y'all need revelation. In Colossians chapter number three, verse four, it says, and when Christ, it's talking about Christ Jesus, who is our life, shall appear, 
then shall ye also appear with him in glory. That's holy matrimony. Who? <laughs> that's the rapture. Now that's a holy matrimony. Before that happens, and you all still down here, single, he says, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affections, evil concupiscence, and covetedness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedient, in the which ye also walk sometimes when ye lived in them. That's not where you live anymore. When Christ, who is our life now, because we are dead in Christ. That's not where we live anymore. We live in Christ. Watch this. But now ye also put off all these. See, we're, we're one body. We're, we're the body of Christ. We're the family of God. You've got to put off these things. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another. Seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. This is the reason why we have so many divorces. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, and filthy communication. Oh, boy. That's it right there, y'all. But let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. It's not talking about cash money, y'all. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in, in psalms and hymns and in, in spiritual songs. Singing with the grace in your heart of the Lord to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word and in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Ooh, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. A true marriage relationship.